What's up guys, in this video, I wanna introduce you to the step bevel feature inside of Hard Ops. This is basically going to allow you to use multiple size bevels non-destructively with full control over how large or how small each individual bevel is. So let me show you how to do this. Now in vanilla blender, I, I usually wouldn't recommend this, but I do wanna show you so you have an intuitive understanding of how this works so you kinda of know what's happening behind the scenes. So I'm gonna add in a cube and I'm gonna add a bevel modifier here, set the segment count to three, turn on hard to normals, and then set the miter outer type to arc. These are basic settings you wanna use, you know, on a bevel modifier, right? So when I do this, you're gonna see, I can just adjust the size of the bevel, pretty obvious stuff. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna add in a cube right here. I'm gonna move the cube into this position and then I'm just gonna run a difference Boolean on this cube right here. Now by default, when I do this, it's gonna automatically change the order because I have hard ops installed. If you're not using that, you would actually have the Boolean just dropping right below the bevel by default. That's actually what I'm gonna do here to show you. So first we have a bevel, let me turn both of them off. We have a bevel first and then we have a Boolean next. Now let's say I wanted a smaller bevel here on the inside portion. So obviously if the Boolean went first and then the bevel came after, this entire bevel is gonna affect the entire mesh. But if I wanna go in and I wanna use a smaller bevel here on the inside, first we need to run a bevel. Once that has finished, then we're gonna add the Boolean and then I can actually duplicate this right here. All right, that's gonna go below. Actually, it's not. I'm gonna move this below. And then what I need to do is um, adjust some settings here. Right now what's happening is the mesh is overlapping. It's um, kind of a mess right now. So what I actually need to do here is I need to go to the first bevel, make sure this is set to 30, and then on the bevels after, if I put this to about 60 degrees here, you're gonna see what happens, all right? I can actually go in. Uh, make this a bit smaller here. Now you're gonna see there's some shading errors occurring. Now what I would recommend doing to fix this is turn off the hardened normals on both of them. You can do it to the final one or I think the better option here is to go in and add a, uh, a weighted normal here. We'll just go in, add a weighted normal and that'll just keep everything you know nice and clean. Keep this on the bottom and just don't move it around and you'll be good to go. And there's actually a setting here a lot of you guys probably haven't seen, but if you go here and you go to pin to last, this will actually pin it. So that way I can't move it. And whenever I add in an option, it's going to be stuck here to the bottom. Weighted normals tend to come last, so I'm going to do that. But now you're going to see here, I have full control over the first bevel. And then since I set the second bevel to 60 degrees, a different angle value, I have control over this inside one. Let's go one step further. Let's go in, let's add in another cube here. Let's move this back, move this up a bit. And same exact idea, I'm just gonna run a difference Boolean. Since I have hard ops installed, it automatically sorts the order. So I'm just gonna go in here, I'm gonna move this Boolean here, right below this bevel. So it's gonna go bevel, Boolean, the other bevel, and then this Boolean, then I can actually just duplicate this bevel right here and move that below. And then I just go in here basically and I can make this amount even smaller. So now what I have is I have three bevels and in this case two booleans and I have full control over each individual size of the bevels on each boolean. This is a very useful strategy. It's non-destructive. I can go in here. I can change this size. I can go in here to this one. I can make this size larger or smaller and then I can also go to this one and make this larger or smaller as well. So it's a little bit complicated in vanilla. I wanted to show you how this works on an intuitive level. Let me show you how to do this in hard ops. So I'm just gonna restart the scene here. Super easy, and by the way guys, if you haven't grabbed our hard ops course, this is currently the most up-to-date program for the hard ops and box cutter tools. We released it this year. Uh, it's gonna get you very, very good at hard ops very quickly. This is the best tool set on the market right now. It's gonna make your modeling workflow roughly eight times faster. So I'd really recommend grabbing that program in the description below. It's gonna take you through every single tool and it'll make your workflow about eight times quicker. So let's go in here and let's add in a cube. And all we need to do here is press Q, go to bevel. I can make a large bevel here. You're gonna see it set to three segments, that's fine. You can make that higher if you want. 
The next thing we need to do, because if I add in a Boolean right now, it's just gonna, you know, sample this existing bevel right here. So this is where the step bevel feature is gonna come in handy. So before you add in your Boolean, you're gonna press Q, you're gonna go to operations, and then you're gonna go to step. This is basically just going to do what I just showed you in the vanilla workflow. It's just gonna do it automatically. You don't have to even think about the order. So I can go in, I can add this Boolean right here, and then I can do this again if I want, you know. If I cut, it's still gonna be sampling this size bevel right here, but again, I can just press Q, operations, I can go to step, make this one even smaller. I could even go, again, I can go step, make that one smaller. I mean, there's obviously gonna be a limit because this is a polygon software. We don't have like infinite resolution, but you can see it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and I basically have full control over each individual bevel size here. Now let me show you the best part about this. Instead of going into the modifier stack here and manually adjusting every single size each time, which is gonna get glitchy and annoying, what you can actually do here is you can cycle through these very quickly. With hard ops, you just press Q. If I go to bevel, it's gonna be using the most recent one. What I can actually do here is hold control and I can scroll down. Now it's gonna affect this one. I can hold control and scroll down. Now it's gonna affect this one here. Same with this one. Hold control and scroll down. It's going to affect that one there. Sometimes it's going to get a little bit glitchy. Just kind of find, you know, the sweet spot there. Um, and then I can scroll down one more time while holding control. And I'll have full control over this portion as well. So this just makes the workflow a lot quicker, a lot more streamlined. And you can go in and kind of adjust these at any point. You know, I can scroll up. I can make the segments higher. I can hold control and scroll back up to go to this one. Control, scroll back up to go to this one. And you can just do that over and over. It's gonna be way quicker than going here into the modifier stack and adjusting it manually. So that's the step bevel feature. This is useful because it's non-destructive and it's also very easy to get different size bevels on your object without having to, you know, do this whole thing inside a vanilla blender. So hopefully you can use this in your workflow, play around with it, get used to the tool. It's a bit confusing at first, but once you have the muscle memory, it should be very easy to use. And again, guys, if you wanna learn our entire hard ops and box cutter workflow to make your blender modeling literally eight times faster, click the link in the top of the description or in the pinned comment. It's gonna take you through our entire workflow for hard ops and box cutter, and we'll get you very proficient with these tools very quickly, very short period of time. And uh, again, click the link in the top of the description to check that out. Hope this is useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.